A few weeks ago, we released a video that explained this topology here, the tiered V-net design, where myself and Gary McMahon walked through the benefits of using this topology, where we insert an additional layer here, where we can put Azure Firewall or virtual appliances of our choice. In that video, one of the things we highlighted was the requirement to have static VNet connection level routes here in order to steer traffic to these indirect spokes at the bottom. What I'd like to do now is talk about a possible enhancement to this design, which is if you are running a NVA, a virtual appliance inside of this layer here that supports BGP, you can now connect that via the BGP endpoint feature to virtual WAN. This has been available in the past, but this feature has recently moved to general availability. So naturally it will be on the radar of many more of our customers. Here is the official Microsoft documentation on this feature. So this is BGP peering with a virtual hub. So this diagram highlights very nicely the scenario that will be presented in this video, wherein we run BGP here to an NVA in this VNet. It's also worth calling out that one of the very common use cases for this feature will be connecting networks that live outside of Azure, whether they be IPsec connected or the increasingly popular pattern of connecting SD-WAN into Azure. You can imagine the ability to dynamically exchange routes from your SD-WAN appliance into Azure Virtual WAN is going to be a very attractive feature for SD-WAN designs that run on top of Azure. And to that end, what I've done is updated the SD-WAN on Azure integration options document we have, where previously we had option six here for BGP endpoint plus NVA. I've removed the preview state from that documentation as well. So that's enough of an introduction from me. Let's hand over to the exciting part of the video where I'm gonna hand over to a fellow member of the global network specialist team at Microsoft, Daniel Mauser, who's based in our US team. If you don't know Daniel, he writes these excellent lab guides in his GitHub repository, and he's written one for this exact scenario, which will very easily let you go from having nothing to have a fully working lab topology. Daniel's guides are super detailed. I mean, he's very modest in his explanation here, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes here. You can go from having a base subscription to having this all working with fully integrated Linux, NVAs with Quagga, etc. If you go to his GitHub page, it's a real treasure trove for Azure networking learning. He's got lab guides here. Each one of these links is, is taking many, many hours to build. So yeah, definitely a shout out to Daniel. Uh, I hope you enjoy the explanation that he gives you. I certainly did. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Hi everyone. My name is Daniel Malzer. I'm Azure networking specialist with Microsoft. Today, I'm going to walk you through this lab scenario called raw traffic through an NVA spoke using a new V1 feature called BGP peering. As you can see, you may have seen this diagram before, but instead of using dynamic routing, as we're going to use today, maybe you have seen it using a static route. And that's what we're going to leverage today. In order to get familiar with the lab, I recommend you go through those two available documentations that we have in the official Microsoft docs. The first one covers this, the same exactly uh, architecture that you see below, through, but using a static route. And the second one actually introduces you to the BGP print. So I have going to you review them and uh, before you go over to the lab, just so you can get a little bit of more uh, background and then you're gonna get mo most of this lab when you go through it. For this lab that we're gonna walk you to today, I will uh, show you how we can provision network virtual appliance, which in my case, I'm using a simple Linux VM with a Quagga BGP component. Where do I peer this NVA towards the virtual WAN. And the main goal here is to have the route propagation between those connected spokes with a, using a route summarization in order to advertise that route towards all the connections towards my hub. The main benefit of this networking design that Adam has discussed 
is you have this flexibility to scale multiple vignettes and connect this transit vignette towards virtual WAN. And the virtual WAN facilitates the routing propagation from all the connections terminating in the hub, as well as with the inter-hub connectivity, I'm going to get the benefit of learning and advertising those routes towards other hubs which are part of the same, same virtual WAN. One point that I want to highlight here is you should have an NVA that's capable, obviously, to talk BGP. And what you can do, you can peer that NVA or set all NVAs towards the virtual routers. They are inside virtual one. And in my case here, I do have a single NVA, which we have two BGP peers for each one of the virtual routers, 68 and 69. In the same way, you can have for the other hub the same type of BGP peerings, and you can have the full flow, any to any connectivity between both sides. And that's the main goal of this lab, is to show you that getting the benefit of the routing propagation towards all ends, we we're going to see that you can get a full any to any connectivity, full mesh connectivity between uh, all the VMs, as you see on the diagram. Keep in mind that I still need to use UDRs on the top level because those vnets are not connected directly so they are referred as indirect spokes and with that what happens is i have a simplification of my udrs if you take a look those udrs that i created here by region they can be reused in case i expand towards more spokes connect to spoke two and as I create new spokes to spoke uh, towards the spoke two i get the benefit of the summary route which is gonna track all the routes towards this Linux NVA. And the Linux NVA is gonna know how to reach those extra spokes that I'm connecting to it. Now let's go over the provisioning. So in order to provision this solution, you have two choices. You can provision using the whole solution with a single shell script. Keep in mind that shell script has to be executed over Azure Cloud Shell, Bash, or a Linux with Azure CLI inside. This solution cannot be provisioned using CLI in PowerShell. The main reason is because those parameters that I'm using, I'm using the Bash style, not in PowerShell. So they are not ready to PowerShell. So just keeping that in mind. So the second option for provisioning is you can go section by section, which gives you also opportunity to make some changes on the parameters. For example, if you want to change the region where your lab gets provisioned, as well as the name of the hubs. So you can do some customizations over the parameter section. After your lab gets provisioned, you're going to go over the validation section, which I have some suggestions for you on how to make some validations if your lab is working properly. I'm going to guide you those validation process in a live uh, environment. Let me switch back to the networking diagram. Going back to the networking diagram. And let me go over the resource group which I already provisioned before uh, the recording of this video. It takes around 60 minutes to get the whole components the provisioned, and this is what we're gonna get inside the resource group. You're gonna have all the branches provisioned. You see that I have a breakdown by location, where I have branch one connects to hub one in east US, branch two, which is connected to the hub two on the west US. In the same way, you're going to have the, all these spokes in the connectivity uh, back to the uh, respective region where you provision them. If you scroll all the way down, we have VWAN object, which is going to show you our virtual WAN with the true hubs provision. And same thing is going to happen. So if you take a look on the uh, network prefixes, I do have the hub one with the 192.168 prefix, 1.0.24, the hub two. And if we go inside the hub one, if you take a look what we do, we have here in terms of connectivity, we 
provision gateway inside the virtual WAN. And if you drill down inside the VPN side to side, you should see this connectivity back to on-premises. Keep in mind that connectivity for IPsec, as I uh, highlighted here, is also using BGP. So the whole solution is dynamic with the exception of the UDRs on the top. So next, what are we gonna do is come over the BGP peers and you can also spot that setup between the virtual routers that I showed you earlier, which is the 6.8 and the 6.9 and the configuration of the BGP peer with my NVA that's sitting in the spoke to. If you review this configuration over the hub to, you're gonna see exactly the same setup towards the NVA sitting on the spoke. My next recommendation is you can uh, go over the effective routes and when you go inside the effective route, you're going to have the chance to uh, review what are the what we are learning from the hub one perspective all the routes they are getting populated through the default route table as you can see we do have i'm going to just collapse this section so we can see the route table better and as you can see we do have we are learning the 10 to 0016 towards a hub bgp connection which uses this AS path 65002, exactly as you see over the diagram. We do have direct connections from spoke one and spoke two with those prefixes. We do have a connectivity using the VPN gateway towards our branch one. And everything that we're learning from the hub two, as you see, comes as next hop type remote hub. If you want to also visualize the routes in a different way, I offer through the validation step a script that you can run and get the dump of the, the both hubs routes. So if you scroll all the way down to the validation section, which I'm doing the right side, you see that uh, I need to specify uh, the resource group. I can go over the steps, but what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use the, the, the section three, step three, which I'm going to run this script down below and it's gonna give me the visualization of the both hubs uh, routing tables. So let me go to Cloud Shell. Uh, before you run this command, just make sure as in the beginning of the session, you have to specify the resource group, copy and paste. And I'm going to go straight to this step three. Copy. And paste explain plain text. And we should now get the information of the factory routes on both hubs. It's going to dump the hub two first. And then we're going to get the same visualization you'll see on the top for the hub one. Time to scroll up a little bit. And so we can get the visualization of both uh, route tables. And again, same idea applies. Uh, it's pretty much like identical with the respective uh, uh, network prefixes. You see that the hub two has, uh, if you re scroll back to the diagram again, we do have hub two learning the prefix 10 for 16 from the spoke for NVA using the hub BGP connection and also the local spoke hubs. Same idea as I explained to you guys on the UI of the portal before. So the next step after we review the routes inside the virtual one hubs is to actually test the connectivity inside the VM. How about we access the branch one VM and check if we can reach the other VMs in the diagram. So what I'm going to do, I have the branch one VM already here. Just keep in mind, all the VMs are accessible through serial console, which are what I'm going to use here. Uh, I'm going to hit serial console. And when I get to the prompt, I can uh, now issue some uh, pings or other ways to the connective check, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds. Let me do a ping to spoke one VM first. Ten zero one 
then 104, which I can access fine. I can do, let me try to spoke 5, which is 10, 2, 1, 4, which we can access fine. Another way that you can do the connectivity test is by using curl. Uh, all the VMs are listening in epoch 80, and you should be able to see the return of the VM name. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'm going to do curl to the first VM, which is 10104. And I see I have spoke VM1. I'm going to repeat the process to the 2014, which is spoke 5, and so on. If I try to do against the spoke 7, which is 414, and I'm going to do against the spoke 8, which stand for true 4. And another expectation is actually, which V1 is going to allow you, it's the branch to branch communication. I should be able also to reach the other branch. If I do a curl 10 204, here we go. I have full connectivity, full mesh connectivity inside the virtual one. As extra bonus, what you can do as well in the validation section, I listed some commands where you can dump the uh, BGP information of the NVA. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to log on the Spoke2 Linux NVA1, and I'm going to issue a few commands, and let's take a look from the NVA side how the BGP looks like. I'm already on the Linux NVA1 that's sitting on the Spoke2. I'm going to just elevate myself based on the instructions. I'm going to hit the VT YSH to get inside the Quagga. And now I'm going to just, just run in config to check the configuration that's currently in place. I do have the route that's getting advertised, which is the 10 to 16, as well as my neighbors, which are the route, uh, virtual routers inside virtual one. Second command that you can issue is BGP. And also you're gonna have a nice view of what is being learned by the Linux NVA on Spoke2. And as you see, this is the network that I'm advertising and everything that's coming as an next hop, the uh, virtual router is actually what the Linux VM is learning. As you see, 6.5, 5.5 is the default AS for the hub. And anything that you see prepending with the 65520, it's because it's coming from the other hub. And that concludes the demonstration. I hope you enjoy uh, this session and thanks for watching.